Hello, my name is Houston, and this is Media Mood Board. This week's more 2024 hype, eight video games and eight comics. I'm looking forward to coming out in 2024. Yes, my name's Houston. This is Media Mood Board, a weekly show about hyper-specific entertainment lists. Well, I meant to do a video each week of things I'm looking forward to in 2024, but I missed last week. So we're just bunching these two together. Let's just get right into it. We're going to do video games first, and then we'll do comics after. So whichever order you want to go in, it sounds good. All right, let's do it. What we're loosely going to do is I'm going to hop between games that I think sound narratively interesting and then games that I think have interesting gameplay. I'm going to go ahead and get this one out of the way. I know it's annoying. Uh, I'm literally just going to say the title so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it is uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree, the Elden Ring DLC. I'm excited for it. That's all I'm going to say. Let's move on to more things that are interesting. Up next is a game that there's not that much information about yet. Uh, it's called Tales of the Shire. Oh, my cat. Um, there's only a teaser trailer and it's just someone scribbling in a old notebook. It is a cozy game a la Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing, uh, set in the Lord of the Rings universe. Um, that's enough. That's all I need. I'm sold. I, I hope we get to see more stuff about it soon. Next up, I'm really excited for Lexaman. So Lexaman is basically a kind of Scrabble RPG. Uh, you play a wizard on a quest uh and instead of casting spells from a list that you've learned like a cloud of words or parts of words shows up and you have to combine them to make words that will then do a spell like for instance if there is a uh, a tree in front of you or something you can find an fi and then an re and then it catches the tree on fire it kind of reminds me of something super simple like baba's you where you're trying to make sentences or something like sorcery which has a kind of similar mechanic but it's text-based this also looks to be inspired by something like Undertale. It seems to have a sense of humor. Um, so I'm just excited to see what they do with this. Next, we'll move to a more narrative game. So let's go Phoenix Springs. This is a point and click adventure game that seems super, super cinematic. It has a great sense of style. I mean, look at these colors. Also, the voice work on it is incredible. I'm going to show you a clip from the gameplay teaser, which gives a sense of tone. Yeah. Lost in thoughts. This nakedness makes me uncomfortable. I introduce myself. Am I interrupting? The door was wide open, but I'm not sure I should be here. You're correct, he says. None of us should be here. It just has a really interesting sense of self, a great atmosphere, and I haven't seen cinematics approached in this way before. It almost feels influenced by like slow cinema or something like that. Game narratives aren't always the best, but this one looks like it has a really good head on its shoulders, and I'm really excited for it. Next, let's talk about Arco. Arco is the story of four people on a journey to take revenge against uh, an evil company. It kind of looks like it's set in a fantasy Old West setting, which it already looks fun enough. But the thing that really sells me on this is the combat. It is a really interesting mix of real-time and turn-based strategy. The game will pause for you to make a decision. And then once it's made, it'll move in real time and then we'll pause again for you to make another decision. It's kind of like playing Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. You roll and then that happens and you take another chance. You can see what the enemies are going to do so you can kind of strategize around it. But I think there's some really cool opportunity for tension and, and scrambling. There's also really interesting integration with the gameplay and story here. Everything is this turn-based thing and everyone follows those rules. However, if you make morally negative decisions in the story of the game, 
ghosts and creatures start appearing on the battlefield which don't follow the turn-based rules so it can attack you at any time so there are interesting consequences to your story choices i just think this is a super fun idea it's a mechanic that my imagination is already spinning as far as thinking about the situations and the scenarios and that is already a win even if it didn't have a fun environment already ghost bike this is from anna perna which is kind of like the a24 of uh video game publishers i played a game last year which had bike riding in it that i the bike riding part of it was probably my favorite part uh this is a story of a person who rides a bike and can traverse between the living and the dead realms it looks like it has a bunch of cool vistas it'll be fun to just ride around if it's anything as tactile as seasons the other game that i played and it's anna perna so they'll probably take the narrative really seriously whether or not it'll be good uh to, to be determined but i'm interested in jumping into another bike based world and and seeing that explored this next one is the only other big budget game outside of elden ring on this list it's black myth wukong this is an action adventure game where you play a monkey warrior fighting various chinese mythological figures it looks very souls inspired combat wise it looks like it has more cinematics than any souls game um but all the character designs and enemy designs look so interesting my favorite thing about AAA games is the amount of money that they are able to pour into making unique assets. So exploring a world with this many swings design-wise should be super fun. This is based on old Chinese myths. It's the same myth that like Dragon Ball Z was based off of. It looks like a good old time. And finally, something that appeals to my nostalgia, but also looks very good, an English haunting. I grew up playing point and click adventure games and in college I played a ton of indie point and clicks. This is a point and click adventure game about a ghost hunter and his medium friend who go around and uh try and solve hauntings i'm excited to jump into a traditional point and click again all right let's talk about comics just a disclaimer if you're looking for serialized comics that's generally not what i'm drawn to so most of these will be graphic novel releases however there is one exception so i'll go ahead and talk about that first that's transformers by daniel warren johnson Beast Wars and Transformers were both things that I was super, super into as a kid. I have reams of notebooks of my own Transformers that I drew and all of that stuff. So it definitely scratches a specific itch. But what's really interesting about this Transformer series from Skybound, which is the imprint that the creator of The Walking Dead created, is that it's headed up by Daniel Warren Johnson, who is the author of books like Do a Powerbomb. He's an expert of wrestling comics. So something that's really fun about this current Transformers Transformer series is the art a looks incredible but the fights between these giant robots are using actual wrestling moves this might be the nerdiest sentence that I've ever said but it's really cool to see Optimus Prime suplexing Starscream there's a real kinetic energy to the panels. I never really followed the IDW Transformers comics, but jumping on here, I'm really liking the story. It's real compact. There's not too many characters. The first few issues are already out. It actually started in 2023, but I'm super excited to see how this continues. And I anticipate this being something that I follow along for the rest of the year, which is not something that I normally do. Also, special shout out to, I'm not sure what they're called, but like the sound effects, the onomatopoeias that are on there, they're integrated into the into the story so well. And they also describe the kind of feel of the sound in a way that I haven't seen in many other comics. And also to me, once again, this is just for me, it makes me feel like I'm a kid playing with a toy. Um, like when something electric comes out, the the wording kind of itself turns into electricity, which feels like how you would uh, narrate <laughs> a robot in uh, when you're playing with toys. So it's just super fun. We'll move on to the graphic novels now. Hypericum by Manuel Fior. There's no official art for this yet outside of the cover, but I'm going to put up a few of the artist's previous works just so you get an idea of how beautiful their compositions and their work is normally. This graphic novel tells two dual stories, one in 1920s Egypt and another in 1990s Berlin. It's a romance. It's about uh, archaeology, um, and it's just about how these two stories are communicating with each other. I love stories with two disparate ideas talking to each other. 
I don't know much else about this book outside of that, but I know I'll love the art. I'm really interested in seeing these two locations in these specific time periods. And I'm really looking forward to how the book weaves not only the stories together, but makes the art talk to each other as well. Spiral and Other Stories by Aiden Kosh. This is one of a couple of short story collections that are in this list. Aiden does a lot of very experimental works that are mixtures of just like abstract panels that don't speak and then this kind of frenetic like scribblings. I'm looking forward to Spiral not only because Aiden is known for doing some more non-conventional topics for their stories, but I'm also interested in the experimental ways in which she will try and tell that story. Speaking of experimental storytelling, we're going to talk about Mary Tyler Moorhawk by Dave Baker. The pitch for this comic is it's basically like a postmodern story. It's about a journalist who's deep diving on an obscure comic, and we get to see the pages of that comic and the footnotes that he's written about it while they're researching. And he kind of uncovers that the author of this comic shares his name and a lot of other things about him, and kind of this big mystery uh, happens. So it's a story told on a bunch of different levels, um, and uh, I'm just interested in seeing how that all is played out. Plus, the art's really fun. Let's get back to something that's a little bit more traditional storytelling. I'm going to read this off because I know I will butcher the name. The Farewell Song of Marcel Labrum by Attilo Michaluzzi. Michaluzzi is a really well-regarded Italian comic artist, and the blurb on this says that this is the first of his work that's been retranslated in the 21st century. This is a spy thriller about Marcel Lebrun and the title, who is sent to Beirut in 1941 to investigate a American millionaire who's living there who's suspected of being a German spy. This is another one where Fanographics, who's so bad at this, uh, has not put out any images for it yet, so I'm putting some of their previous work on the page. It reminds me of, of like early Mignola, which I really love Mignola's work. The artwork is also being restored by his daughter, which I think is a really like sweet, like fun part of this whole story. I'm also excited for Curses by Kevin Huizinga. He also has a reputation of being an experimental comics artist, but he's still kind of beholden to kind of like gag strips and things like that. So it's a kind of in interesting mixture. This is another short story collection. Based on the preview images that Drawn and Quarterly has sent out, it looks to be a lot about like suburban or city locations a lot of like location based oh. stuff once again with these experimental comic i i really love the mixture of experimental and kind of genre play that they do so i'm excited to see what kind of stories he tells in this and and how he tells them another drawn and quarterly release gleam by freddy carrasco is this kind of like cyberpunky uh it reminds me of like tekken kinkret uh, the the little preview images that it's shown, but based on the blurb, they uh, there seems to be some interesting panel work going on, um, which is always super interesting. The previews of this art also don't show any dialogue, and there's a lot of movement and emotion, um, and I'm always so enamored by artists who can pull that off. Can't wait to jump into this one. We'll finish this off with my spiteful pick, which is Breck Devins. My favorite comics artist, who is based out of Belgium, is releasing his new work, The Jellyfish King, Volume 1, this year. It's not in English. When will it be available in English? I'm not sure. But hopefully soon. I am a huge fan of all of his work. He just keeps getting better and better. I will buy anything he releases. Uh, please, please someone tr translate this soon, uh, because I can't wait to read it. Well, you made it. Thanks so much for watching. Are there any comics or video games that you're excited about coming out this year? Let me know in the comments. I'll be back next week with another hyper-specific entertainment list. My name's Houston. This is Media Mood Board. Bye.